Welcome back to our fourth video of chapter one now for uh, PWA for Beginners. Here with me again is Patrick. Hey folks. Today we're going to talk about um, some real world examples of progressive web apps. So Patrick, over the last three videos, you've introduced uh, to us a lot of these theoretical stuff behind the scenes. Can you show us something, you know, real? Yeah, <laughs> I'd be really happy to. Uh, there's actually a lot of them. There's more every day. Uh, we don't really notice them because they're, you know, sometimes you can go to them as, you know, just websites and sometimes they're actually real apps. So we don't really make a difference. There's one cool website that I like to go to to find out some uh, some more uh, PWAs and that's pwastats.com. It will give you a list of PWAs as well as really cool success stories that these companies have had with moving to PWAs. Uh, but yeah, let me demo a couple of uh, of uh, PWAs actually. Oh, so Twitter, Twitter um, they've got a great mobile app. They have a great website. They also have a great PWA. So if you go to their website, you can actually just install the PWA by going into the address bar of the browser and clicking the install button. And many people actually prefer this app uh, over the mobile app, even on the mobile phone, because it's really well done. It's very light. You know, it's very uh, fast to install. It doesn't use a lot of uh, data on your phone as well, which may be important. Um, and what I really like about it is that they've really streamlined the UI, right? It's only the most important things only. You don't need to see everything that the website has. Because um, at the end of the day, when you install the app, you really have one thing in mind. You want to accomplish a task. In that case, you want to either read tweets or you want to write tweets, nice. right? So you don't need like the what's with Twitter about, you know, about, you know, more information about the website or whatever. Uh, so they've managed to just boil it down to the minimal number of things that will, you know, let users accomplish the task that they want to accomplish. Uh, and that's a really good best practice when it comes to um, building apps. Um, they've done another number of really cool things uh, in the Twitter PWA is they've actually used some operating system integration features. One of them is they've actually defined shortcuts in the manifest and these shortcuts appear in different ways depending on the device that you're on. But if you're on Windows, that means that you can right click on the icon of the app and you'll have a number of um, actions that you can do really quickly from there. If you're on a mobile device, that means you can long press on the icon of the app and you'll have the same actions there as well. They've also used the badging API, which I mentioned in the previous video to show you the number of uh, unread uh, tweets as well. Um, and they've also used the share target manifest uh, feature, which allows you to use um, Twitter as a receiver of, of uh, content. So for example, if you're sharing a photo from your mobile device, then you can share it with the Twitter PWA directly as if it was the real native app installed on your device. Um, there's another one that I think uh, has done a really good job in terms of decluttering the UI and streamlining the process, and that's the Starbucks app. Uh, if you want to order coffee on the go, uh, really cool app, very simple, um, very small, but it does the job really, really well. Um, now, there's another app that I would like to quickly demo, and that's uh, it's called PWAMP. Uh, I'm really bad at naming things, but this one, uh, I've done it myself. It's a music player app. Um, it's specifically for desktop. Uh, it works on mobile as well, but it works better on desktop. Everything is local. Uh, there's no server. It works offline, apart you know, from the initial installation of the app, of course. But then what it can do for you is you can drag and drop your music files on it, and then you can play those songs uh, on your computer very easily. It has a cool visualizer as well. It has a widget as well. Um, it uses the window controls overlay advanced feature, which we talked about before. Um, it uses a, a ton of these operating system, you know, integration features that PWAs have access to, to make it really feel like a real app on the device as well. Um, and then the last one that I want to demo right now quickly is called WAMI, which, uh, you know, I told you I was really bad at naming things. Um, this one I also did recently. It's an image manipulation application. It's also for desktop. Although it works for mobile as well, but I really didn't spend enough time to make it to really respond well on the smaller screen. Uh, but on desktop, you can like drag and drop images 
and then you can manipulate them. You can create a number of steps to manipulate the image, like turn it into black and white, resize it, rotate it, uh, crop it, you know, whatever you want. There's like many, many different uh, steps that you can apply there. And then it's going to batch, uh, manipulate all the images in one go, and then you can save them back to disk. And to do this, it uses uh, two things that are really interesting, I think. One is the file system access API to be able to save the changed files to uh, your disk. And then the other one is uh, WebAssembly, which we talked about earlier. It uses this to actually manipulate uh, the images, right? Uh, in a way that's like really, really fast. Cool. So we've seen some like super well-known names like Twitter and Starbucks, and then we've seen some shameless plug from Patrick, <laughs> all the apps that Patrick built himself, uh, although they're super cool to be completely honest. Um, and then, so we've also kind of mentioned um, design-related practices throughout this uh, chapter. Anything else that our viewers should know to, you know, to make a great PWA? Yeah, I, I think there's really a lot of stuff there. Um, there's there's a few good, you know, things to keep in mind. Um, some of them are specific to progressive web apps. Some of them are just specific to using the web. Um, and I think when it comes to that latter part, using the web, two things I want to emphasize here. One is performance and the other one is uh, accessibility. Performance, you know, great performance leads to better user experience. It's a really important thing to keep in mind. And then accessibility means making your application universally accessible by everyone, you know. And that means actually expanding your target audience as well. And then the second, or really, I think it was the first group that I said, but the group that's about PWA only, um, I think a set of best practices there is making your product as close to a real app as you can, and not really just a website. That's that's sort of a, a thing that people, it's a, it's a mistake that a lot of people make. They have a website, they wanna have a PWA, and it's just like add a manifest, add a service worker, add HTTPS, and they and they're done. And really, that's not the end. I think there's like more to it. So um, let's go a little bit into more details. I talked about performance again. Great performance equal better user experience. If you have a poor perceived performance, it'll lead to a lot of frustration for your users. Um, so when your website is slow, you know it's one thing, but then if it's installed as a PWA on the device, it's even worse because people have certain expectations of applications and they typically expect applications to go fast. Um, service workers will help you a lot here because you can be used to cache a lot of information. And so that means that instead of having to go to the network every time, you know, and have that latency of request and response from the, from the internet, mm -hmm. you can be instant. Um, but there's more, like there's things like registering user interaction immediately. For example, if you tap a button, you want something to appear immediately, or you want at least the action to register. So like having a little bit of a different style on the button as you click, or loading the next screen, even if you don't have the data to show yet, you could load what's called a skeleton sc uh, screen, which is essentially those gray bars that look like the content is loading and it's not there yet, but it creates the expectation that something's going to be loading. And it's all about perceived performance as well. Uh, people are going to perceive your product and your app a lot more responsive and faster uh, this way. I mentioned accessibility as well, which is another thing that you should keep in mind. And in fact, I think the most important thing here is to keep it in mind right from the start. It's gonna be much harder to think about accessibility at the end of your process, right? So try to make your uh, user interface as accessible as you can while you're working on it. Um, there's one good practice here that people often forget about, which you know is, is weird when you think of it, is just using the right HTML elements for the job. So for example, if you need a button in your um, application, then there's an HTML element for that and it's called button. So I think, uh, you know, just thinking in terms of using the right elements for the job is going to go a long way as well. Um, and then there's this group of making, you know, your app um, as much as a real app as you can. Uh, so good, you know, best practices when it comes to making a real PWA. So differentiate your app from a website. 
again, that's a mistake that a lot of people make is that they think that because they have a website, they can go and do a PWA really easily. Um, and that's great, you know, but I think you should not see your product as just a website only. Once the person has made the choice to install your app, then again, they have different expectations. There are two things that I can think about that are uh, really common on the web. Huge headers and huge footers. You know, if you scroll at the bottom of a website, you'll often have a really huge footer with lots of links and copyright information and about yourself or about the product or whatever. Typical applications don't have that. So just get rid of it. Get rid of the massive hero image at the top of your uh, header as well. Just go straight down to business. People want to accomplish a task. They've taken the decision to install your app. They know what it's about. So don't you know waste any um, any of their time trying to sell your app. That's um, that's one of the good practices there. Um, and then the other thing is you know really use those advanced capabilities that we talked about in a previous video. Uh, add great offline support. Your app is a real app now, so live up to what users expect of it. Publish it on the store. You know, people are going to look for your app on a store. Use pwabuilder.com to create, like transform your app into a package that can be published on the Microsoft Store or the Play Store for Android or App Store for iOS. Um, and then I think one final is re-engage your users as appropriate. You can use really good notifications when you have new content or new, you know, something new to show to your users. Um, and use the badging API, you know, use everything that's available out there, you know, depending on your use cases, but it's gonna go a long way in making your app a lot better. Cool. I'm really glad that Patrick mentioned pivotbuilder.com because that's what I'm here to represent. In front of me are two Mannies. They're called Manny the Web Otter, you know, Web Manifest. Um, so that's why I'm an otter. So hope all of these real world examples of progressive web apps really inspired you to make your own progressive web apps. So thank you, Patrick, again. And as usual, here are some of the resources that we recommend you to go um, check out on your own if you want to explore more about progressive web apps. In the next video, we're going to conclude chapter one um, and do a quick recap and stay with us. See you in the next one.